What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. We tell you all the time how easy sales is, how easy appointment setting is. And I don't think people truly understand like what I'm saying. So what we want to start doing is giving you guys real actual training. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend the next minute telling you how you should be appointment setting on your calls. And then I'm actually going to have two members of my team and we're going to run mock calls live and record this so that you guys can see what it looks like, what it sounds like, and honestly, how easy it is. So what is appointment setting? Guys, appointment setting calls, there's two kinds. There's DM setting and there's on the phone. Today, we're going to be talking about on the phone. It should be a three to seven minute phone call where all you're doing is you're understanding who the person on the other side of the phone is. You're financially qualifying them to make sure they can one, afford your offer and two, they're a good fit. And three, you want to commit some sort of urgency to that call. You're not selling anything. You're not getting too far in the weeds and you're not going to be sitting and like going through the offer and everything that is a part of your offer and trying to actually sell the person. All you're doing is those three things. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in here and I'm going to let our teammates up. So guys, we have Philip and we have Kishan. Um, both are members of my team. Kishan is one of our sales coaches. Philip is an appointment setter for us internally right now. Both of them make $10,000 a month. They're both actually in college. And uh, Kishan, you live in a frat house. and Philip, you live, where do you live? At your mom's house. <laughs> so what we're going to do, um, I think this is the most advantageous for you guys, is Kishin is going to be the appointment setter here. And this is called a mock call, by the way. This is basically a real sales call, but it's just fake. And Philip is going to be the prospect. And what I'm going to do is every minute or so during their conversation, I'm going to break down why they're doing what they're doing to you guys, the viewer, so that you understand the thought process behind what they're doing. So um, go ahead, guys. Cool. And just to be clear, I'm going to be selling Closer Cartel, which is our offer. Um, and maybe I can show Philip a thing or two. Um, but let's let's get started. So, Philip, I'm going to pretend to call you, and you're going to answer the phone, okay? Yep. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Hey, is this Philip? Yeah. Who's this? Hey, what's going on, Philip? This is Kishin with Closer Cartel. I saw that you filled out our ad on Instagram like 20 minutes ago. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. I know you filled out that. Do you have like three to five minutes to chat real quick just to see if we can help out? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. So what actually caught your attention and made you want to fill out that ad in the first place? Okay, wait, pause, because we're, we're going to go through this. The first thing I want you guys to understand is you can even see it in Kishin's face, right? Um, <laughs> when you're appointment setting, you're going to literally be doing this like on, on your phone. So they're not going to see your face. This is not, not usually done on Zoom. But you can tell he's so good at tonality that he's like making faces. He's like, well, like he looks confused. And the reason is if you call someone immediately trying to be like salesy and direct and forward, you're going to raise sales resistance and people are going to like not want to pick up the phone. However, the reason he's making these faces is because he is actually using the right tonality. So it's kind of like a confused sort of tonality. Like imagine you're like looking for papers on your desk and you notice he didn't go, Hey, Philip, I saw you filled out an ad and, and I want to do this. That's the wrong tonality. The right tonality is kind of like you're looking for like papers on your desk. You're lost. Like, hey, is, is, is this Philip? Yeah, this is Philip. Oh, hey, man, I just saw you. You filled out like an ad. And that kind of tonality is going to allow you to actually open up that phone call. So go ahead and resume. Cool. So, yeah, I know you saw or you filled out an ad like 20 minutes ago. What actually caught your attention and made you want to go ahead and do so? Just to see if I can help. Yeah, on that ad, I just saw like college students making like five, 10, 15K a month. And I've always been wanting to do that. So that's why I swiped up. Okay. And I know you said you've been always wanting to do that. How long have you felt like you've just been wanting to make money online for? Like seriously, the past like nine months. All right. And I know you said you are in college. Do you have a job right now or what does that look like? Yeah, I have a little uh, job on the side that I do with my with my uncle. What do you do? Uh, construction. Okay. And just so I can get a better idea, like how much are you making right now per month? But... Probably like three, four K on a good month. Okay. Um, and just so I can get in a better idea, because our investment for our program does cost anywhere from like 1500 to three K. Again, this is all hypothetically, but if you feel like we could a hundred percent help you out, like, do you have capital saved up to potentially invest into this? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. Right. Pause. So what Kishin just did was he started creating what we call the gap. And this is really used in a sales call, but we use it as setters to qualify people. So you notice he didn't immediately go, hey, do you have three grand to invest? Like that's, that's going to raise sales resistance. You're not going to get anyone on the call. 
But what he did do is he understood his current situation. What you would then do on a sales call is you would go from current situation to desired situation. And that gap in between is what your product or service or offer usually fills. But in a setting call like this, remember, all we're doing is trying to get them on another call with a closer and make sure they're qualified and they're a good fit. He's just qualifying, okay, what do you do right now? Okay, I, I can make some assumptions based on that. You're maybe a good fit. And then he says, hey, hypothetically, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but hypothetically, do you have between here and here to invest in XYZ offer? And what that does is it starts to create the gap so that he can then get the guy actually intrigued enough to book another call but it also allows us to financially qualify. So at this point, based on what Philip said, he's a good prospect and we can continue the call. And remind me, Philip, I have the attention span of a nap, but like how long have you been wanting to, to make money online for again? Probably like the past like nine months, seriously. Okay, and over the past nine months, like what have you tried so far? Uh, just like the usual Amazon FBA, drop shipping, stocks. Okay, and are you doing any of those still? No. Why is that? Uh, I mean, it didn't really make the money I, I wanted to make. And I was more so losing money than actually making it. Why Why don't you feel like it was making the money that you wanted to make? I don't know. I kind of just like wanted to do it like by myself. I didn't really have like proper training or like guidance. I just kind of like did it myself. Okay. So this time around, do you feel like you need proper guidance and training? Or do you feel like you're just going to go ahead and do this on your own? No, this time around, I want to have like proper coaches and training in place. Why do you want that? Because I know like I had like coaches before and like they helped me out a lot. And I feel like with coaching right now in terms of like business, like I feel like it's going to just exponentially grow me. Okay. And I know you said you've been wanting to make money online for like nine months. I guess like what's like the long-term goal? Is it to transition out of your job? Is it to do this on the side? Like give me a little bit more context. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to just like escape the, the construction job and leave that. But also I'm in school too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on it's a uh, summer break right now, but I don't want to like go back next semester. Why is that? Oh, dude, I just don't want to like do the normal nine to five route and just like get involved in like the rat race and nine to fives in college and in debt. I just can't do that. Okay. Well, other than that, like obviously not wanting to go the nine to five route. I know you said you've been wanting to seriously been making or make money for the past like nine months online. I guess like. I guess like what specifically makes this important now rather than pushing off another eight, nine months? Like why now? Yeah. So I just see like the, the people around me, like my family members, especially like my uncle, like he's in his late forties and he's still doing construction. Like it's taking a toll on his, on his mental health, but also his like physical body. And I just, I just can't see myself doing this longer than the next few weeks. I, I just need to get out of it. Okay. Pause. So three key things just happened, um, which Kishan asked. So he created urgency. So not only why do you want to do this? Like all, everybody wants to make money, right? Everyone wants to make money online. But why do you want to do this now? Because if there's no urgency, when they book that call with a closer, there really isn't going to be any urgency for them to buy. So we want to kind of pre-frame that and start to get that urgency brought to the surface. So that by the time they get on that call, one, they actually show up on the call. And two, they're easier to sell. The next thing he did was he actually created that gap again. So he got the current situation before I said pause. But this time he said, well, you've, you've been doing this nine months. Where do you want to be? And then he said, well, I guess like long term, what, what does that look like? Where do you want to go? So now Philip is out loud saying where he is, where he wants to be, why he doesn't want to be there, which is kind of like an anti question. So like sometimes more powerful than where you want to be is where you don't want to be. And we're getting him to vis or not visibly, but verbally bring that up. So that by the time we get to the point, which is going to happen right after this, where Kishin is going to try to set him on that call with a closer, if there's any objections or if there's any doubt or there's any fear, he can kind of loop back and say, hey, but like you said, kind of like a sales call, you said you wanted to do this. It's important now. This is why you don't want to be in the situation you're in. And we kind of use that to get them on that next call. So go ahead. Cool. And Phil, throw me some, throw me some red flags just so we can kind of address them. Yeah. So... Yeah, but, I mean, from everything you told me, I definitely think we can help you out. But honestly, I only met you like five minutes ago. So what we need to do is just get you on a longer call. It would be with one of our coaches. It'd be really just a deeper dive into your situation just to see if we can help you out. Um, do you got a time for like a 20, 30 minute Zoom call tomorrow? Uh, we have some slides either in the, the morning or the afternoon. Which one works better for you? Yeah, the afternoon definitely works. But like, do you think like 
because I'm working like all day. Do you even think like I have time for this? For time for what? For like the whole high ticket sales thing. All right. Well, it's it's a matter of fact of how important this is to you, right? Because Philip, if if I, I mean, this is all hypothetically, but if I had a son and he broke his arm and he needed to go to physical therapy every Wednesday. And that was important for me to take him to physical therapy every single Wednesday. I would probably find I'd probably find the time to take, go ahead and take him, right? Yeah. So the question here is: is is this important for you to get out of? Yes or no? Yes, hundred percent. Why, why is that? I just can't. I can't work another day. I can't go back to college. I'm kind of like in the the life I I always want to run away from, and I feel like this is like my only way out. Okay. So will you make the time for this? Yes. You sure? Because you don't have to do anything. Yeah, I will. Cool. So what we can do is get you on the longer call tomorrow. You said in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. We have some time slots at two or three, which one works better? Eastern time. Yeah. 3 p.m. works. Okay. And there's nothing that could pop up that wouldn't allow you to come. Maybe besides like Godzilla coming to town and wrecking everything. Like there's nothing that could pop up that wouldn't allow you to come. No, I don't think so. You sure? Sound a little yeah. uncertain. Yeah, yeah. Nothing could pop up. 100%? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Cool. Cool, man. So what we can do is get you on the longer call. I'm going to send you a few videos before um, that call. It'll just give you a better understanding of like what that call would be about. Make sure you watch them. Our coach from where will um, confirm that you did watch them. It's like the the teacher, like he's going to ask you if you did your homework. So make sure you do your homework. Um, and then tomorrow I'll double, double confirm just to make sure Godzilla didn't come into town or anything like that. Um, and then we'll be good to chat at 3 p.m. Eastern. Sound good? Sounds good. See you soon. Awesome, man. Have a good one. Okay, pause. So a couple of things there. One, we're not trying to sound desperate of like, please book a call, please book a call. Um, you don't want to ever sound like that. So we're actually kind of playing this in the sense of like, are you sure? Like, are you sure this is a good fit for you? Like that kind of, that kind of frame, because it takes people's resistance down and it makes it seem not like we're trying to sell them something, but like we're trying to help them, but we just want to make sure they're the right fit. So to Philip, by Kishin saying that, Kish, I mean, Philip is going to feel a lot better about it. And we're kind of confirming that he actually wants to do this because it doesn't matter how many calls you set if they don't show up, right? You get paid as an appointment setter when a show called uh, books or not books, but buys. And if they don't show up to the call, then you, you don't get paid. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the objection. So there was a little bit of an objection, kind of like in a closing call where he's like, yeah, but like, I don't know. Do you think I'll have time? And the same way you would handle that in a sales call, we got to basically handle that not to buy, but to still get them to book. So Kishin said, Hey, like basically the analogy of, would you make time for this? If it was important, your, your son breaking his arm in this case. And he says, yeah. And then we loop back and we confirm, Hey, is, is this important for you? Cause obviously he said it is, but sometimes you got to get people to see a little bit different of a perspective. And Philip says, yeah, it is. So we go ahead and get them booked. And then we simply ask them, Hey, like, we have some time tomorrow about this time. Uh, does that work for you? Yeah, that works for me. So it's not like, cool, you're going to book this time and show up to this call and this sales call. And we angled it as, well, we think we can help you. But like, again, I only met you like five minutes ago. But what we can do is one of our coaches, we can actually talk with you for about 30 minutes and see if this is something uh, that would be a good fit. Does that, does that sound good to you? So it's always leaving the power up to the prospect. And we're not trying to force them into anything. Um, and this just goes back to that sort of consultative sales style. So Kishan, do you have anything else to, to add to that? Um, no, but there is stuff that I could have dug deeper on. Like I could have dug deeper on like what happens if you continue. I could have future paced them. I could have consequenced them. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, that's the job for the closer. Like what what I see happen often too many times is appointment setters will try to get too deep and then their their setting calls take 30 minutes yeah. and then they hear the exact same thing on the closing call and, and then the prospect's just like you guys did the exact same process on me like what even just happened yeah so get what you need on the setting call have it take three to seven minutes like obviously we 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 broke this down so it took longer than that but like these calls should only take three to seven minutes get off the call be efficient make a hundred dollars a dollar or dials a day and you will make a lot of money doing this agreed and and philip we we just did an interview but depending on what video drops first you are doing this actively right now as an yes. appointment center for both us and an e-com offer and you're making what per month 10k a month doing exactly this exactly yeah see so I think this is a, a super valuable video. Um, but guys, if you like this kind of stuff, like please subscribe, please like this video. And th this is literally what we do. It's what Closer Cartel does at a, at a much higher level. Um, 
Kishin does our appointment setting coaching calls. So imagine this, but a lot, a lot funnier <laughs> um, and, and multiplied out by, by 30 to 50 people. And uh, Philip, maybe you'll start doing those soon with the, with the pace you're on. But any, any final words? I'll go to my end. Cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And if you guys like this kind of content, this is a bit new, make sure you let me know in the comments and we'll make a lot more of these. There's a lot of different stuff we can make. So I'll see you guys soon.